Today we're talking with executive producer Trayvon Williams of Autographs the Series. Stay tuned. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live. Conversations. Boom. Hey. What up, y'all? It's your boy DJ Jesse Jane here in studio for Black Hollywood Live's Conversations. Oh, all right, Chris Brown. We're here with uh, executive producer, lead actor of Autographs, the series, Trayvon yeah. Williams. Yes, yes. Thank you for coming in studio. I'm Appreciate excited to be here. Thank you for having Fresh, me. Fresh, all white. You know why? Because this is about to be the birth. You're going to see this man's face everywhere this year. Yes. Because... I needed to talk to you and have a conversation with you because we got an email in of this series autographs. Yes. And as I'm reading all the things that you, you do and you know you you want to accomplish with this series, I was like, I fuck with his head. <laughs> I was like, wow, this guy really like he's a hustler. He he he's a motivating person. He he's up all night working. Yeah. And. I just can't imagine that this year isn't going to blow up for you. I mean, you got a lot in the works. First, let's talk about autographs. Okay. So, what is the, sh the series about? Well, autographs the series is about three best friends dealing with a lot of internal sh issues and struggles. Because a lot of times people see when people make it, like within the NBA player, whether it's a big actor, but they don't see the internal things that they go through. Mm. Like, for instance, they might not book a role. But they end up going back. They got to find something that inspires them and go deep. Sometimes you got to go back where it all began. So that's pretty much what autographs is. A lot of internal struggles. Where did you, uh, where was the script kind of pulled from as far well, as the writing? Well, the show started up based off me and uh, other lead actors, J.J. Green. We wanted to do uh, uh, just something for real. The to our real. We was like, we had the director named Malcolm Lex. He's like really, really good. He's going to be dope this year. Um, and we say, we got the director, let's just come up with this. So I had the idea of this. I say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show up. We're going to improv it. The, this, the, um, the imp we're going to improv the promos. Mm. We're going to add this to our reel. Nobody's going to know because we're really good at what we do. So we did that. And after we finished, we was like, yeah, we need to make this as something else. And I was like, you know what? I'll do it. I started a production company. I said, this would be perfect. I get to work with my friends. We get to bring on all this talent. I know all these people that need opportunities. So I said, we're going to open up doors. This is what, we, this is what we're going to do. And then JJ and another guy hired to write it, wrote it together, named Matt Lorenzo. So they wrote it together. Mm. Um, now, as I see that we're working. Uh, there's a, a GoFundMe yeah. for this right now? Yeah. All right. So where can everyone, so that they can come support this, what, what, uh, how do we The go GoFundMe is GoFundMe, and it's backslash autograph the series. That's how you can find it. Also, you can find it on my on the, on the my Facebook page, um, Trey Williams, T-R-A-Y Williams. And you can find it on my Instagram as well, T R A Y underscore underscore Williams. Oh. Why is this such an important story right now in this year to be told? Uh, it's important because I feel like it's a lot of young people that's that's doing it, and people just so many people want to do it, be in this business, but they don't understand how hard it really is. All the things you have to go through in order to get where you want to go. Mm. So this is important for me to, for us to tell these stories. I got a lot of people watching me back in college, back everywhere that know me personally. That just still can't believe what I do and how how, how successful I became mm. within this business. So I want to show them it's not easy. It's not something you can wake up and say I just want to do this. Boy, it sure isn't. And one thing I personally like to ask everyone that I talk to is. Uh, being a creative person we fall in these like depressive states or like yeah. oh man I can't do it like oh I, I'm just gonna go back home I'm gonna give up you and question everything you question it's like why 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 I was like saying this I was like I never want to ask the reason why the question <laughs> why ever again how do you get out of that personally well I, f I just feel like I've been through everything you could think of in life you know everything bad that can happen to a person have happened to me and i'm only 25. Mm. so i said this is nothing different i said everything i've been through in my life prepared me for this so people don't understand they just look and think i just said i want to be active this is it but i prepared myself through so many things i've been through in the past to this point so nothing can break me so this is something that how then my transition to this business happened so smoothly and then ever since i've been in this business it's been it's been kind of like a, a successful thing for me so i was like this is meant for me to do so whenever something don't go right i just kind of go i get away you got to find a getaway sometimes but no, like in well, LA, I might go in a dark room. I may go on the beach. I may go do something just to get my mind off of it. But this is something that's meant for me to do. You know, I'm opening up doors for people. This is something I, I love to do. So this is not, there's no in and out for me as far as quitting or questioning. Nah, this is what I'm, this is what I was made to do. Uh, you're a jack of all trades. I mean, producing, acting, uh, right. writing. Um, how, how do you kind of, I mean, I, okay, I just finished an interview right now. And okay. he said something really, 
awesome, I think, because I don't feel like I hear enough of it in the industry. But we live in Hollywood, right, where these people come out and, you know, we see all these actors and everyone has a title of something, right? Mm -hmm. And no one puts the work behind the title. Yeah. they just out there with this title. Um, for you to become all these things, obviously, you know, you're out here put, putting in the work and putting yeah. in your time. Um, for you, when was the moment where you said, you know what, I need to learn the craft. I need to oh. learn learn the craft of all of these hats that I put on versus, you know, a lot, like a lot of people do. They run around and just say that this is what, uh, mostly with music music artists where they like, oh, I'm a, I'm a singer. I'm a singer. Well, are you an artist though? Yeah. For you, when was your kind of realization of like, okay, like I really need to do this. You know, I, th this isn't just a hobby. Oh, well, what, what happened was it's like, once you get in this business, once you do your research on people and these titles, you see that, that they still take acting wise for instance they still take classes Denzel people still take classes so I said these people still taking classes it's never to a point of my peak it's just always about growing and then I got in Dustin Felder's class he's an acting coach in uh, Hollywood he's really really good and he always tell me you gotta always work on your craft so I just kind of but I always go where I feel comfortable at like so even in the beginning before I got in this business I stayed up for three months straight researching the business side of it like I stayed up every night reading and knowing my percentages I said yeah I'm gonna do this but I'm gonna make sure I go in there prepared they're not gonna try to get over me so this is gonna you know catapult me to a different level because I'm gonna be prepared mm. like preparation is the biggest thing so before I even booked any acting gig I researched the business first and that was that was the difference. You have a, a gig coming up, well, that you've already filmed. Thirty six hours later. Yeah, thirty six hour layover. Yeah, layover. directed by Mark Harris. Uh, Monica Calhoun is in it. Brian White. Um, who else? Uh, Eamon Joseph. Oh uh, man, he, he's really really good. He's yeah, in a lot dope. of stuff. He was in. Yeah, he was in Dope. He so he and he's actually a good friend of mine. I call him my big brother. So he's a mentor of mine at, per se as well. He's a very positive actor. I, I see him always on Facebook. We're friends, and I see him like he always leaves like positive affirmations and things. On that's what I'm saying. Like, people like that, man. Like yeah. that's how I keep my my like man. This is so dope. Like this is how I kind of mold myself. I look at the positives too. I take the positive out of everything. So that's why you look at my social media. Everything that I post a picture like. Like for for the show for anything that I've been on the news whatever it is I'll post a long paragraph with it to show everything that led up to that like today I drove for 36 hour labor right I drove probably 80 miles that day because it started off me being background because I was like I would already been booking roles but he didn't know who I was so I said you know what I want to get around this guy so let me humble myself let me just show up so he when I got there he seen I know Amy oh uh, man I'm in and he seen I knew some other people like the wardrobe lady so he was like. So he just kept watching me. He didn't say anything. He just kept watching me. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, he's paying attention. So later on in the night, I had to catch a flight the same night to go to Texas. So by 5 in the morning, it was like, we finished filming at 4. I had to be on my flight by 5.30. <laughs> so that whole day, I probably drove 70-something miles from different locations just to film that. And I got and I booked that role right before I got, got a flight. And this movie will be coming in theaters this year. So just to let people know, like, sometimes you have to humble yourself no matter what you've done if you want to get a certain, certain level. Like, I, I, I'll do that that's the difference between me and a lot of people and yet th very much I mean driving 80 miles I know I, I could name some f people that I know very well off the top <laughs> of my hand that would be like I gotta drive 8 minutes away and that's too far like I'm just gonna you lay. gotta do what you gotta do man that, that's, that's what makes you different that's that's the biggest question everybody asks cause like. if you don't do it someone else is gonna be out there doing it yeah. and that we were kinda talking about uh, before we went out live about sleeping uh, and <laughs> I, you know sometimes there only be 2 hours to get yeah. some sleep yeah. sometimes they're in no hours to get some <laughs> two, sleep. Two hours for me feel like I slept for a whole uh, for a whole day. I'm okay. like I'm ready. Like I got this nap. I'm, I'm energized. Let's go. What, what's next? Let me get on this internet. Let me do what I need to do. I know something could be done right now. Let, let me figure it out. Take me through your creative process. So like a, a day for you. Like you, you know, <laughs> you you wake up. What are you thinking about in the beginning of the day? I'm thinking about what could I accomplish today. What's something that I haven't done already that could be done like what's something i can do for autographs what's something i can do something i can submit for um can i have a meeting with my agents what what can i do to be progressive because every day I, I have my plan and i'm like i got fit in this day i have to research for three hours that's what i do every day research new opportunities i need to send a certain amount of emails it's like i have my thing i'm like i wake up in the morning at like seven to eight i'm ready to go before i even brush my teeth i'm sending emails or checking my emails so it's like i'm i'm, I'm about business even probably even in my sleep i love it um all right on top of that, you got a new cartoon yes. that's about to come out. Yes. And what? I want. You, do you draw this? Uh, no, I have a, uh, I have a person that uh, drew it. Okay, but his you name can't is Mark McKenzie. The story. 
Uh, yeah, McKinley. I'm writing a story. I'm writing episodes, and I probably have some writers come on and help with it because I want to be really good. But I'll tell you, I won't say the name, but I will explain a little bit about what is like the cartoon is about, what it's going to cover. Okay, it's going to cover multicultural. It's going to cover positivity. And it's going to show the world because what we in state of emergency we in right now was this race issue. So I want to cover everything. I want to show that people can mix mix races. I want to show that we can work together and drive out the darkness. Mm. So that's pretty much this show is going to be. So this is going to see it soon. Trust me. But that's what pretty much what my cartoon is about. Because I'm all about that. Even on autographs, I have a, a variety of everybody, every type of ethnicity, race, uh, disability. I don't really care if you have the talent and you persistent. I will open up doors for you. I, that's that's what I do. What um. Why a cartoon? Why did you Why did you want to go with that Cause, that route? Because first I wanted to be on it. I was like, I always wanted. To, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I got all these voices in my head. Because at first I wanted to play all the characters, but I'm like, because it would be funny. But I'm like, eh, I'm still considering that. But I was like, nah, I want to be on the cartoon for sure. And I was like, let me just create it. Mm. I'm very creative. I can't explain like all day. I have so many things coming to my head, and so, and so a lot of people. But I know how to bring things to the to the light and to the forefront. And that's my gift. I, I know how to do that. And I have the resources to do it. Hit a connect, uh. Yeah, uh, yeah. I always say that. I'm low-key the plug, though. <laughs> what's your sign? Gemini. Okay. Yeah, a lot of greats. Tupac. Yeah. Know, left Eye. There's a lot of us. Other than myself, all the men in my family are Geminis. They're great people. Right? I know how to deal with y'all, because sometimes y'all can be like... <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of personalities, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that's a nice <laughs> yeah. way of saying it. Yeah, we have a lot. And I think that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what comes to the character. Like, I can switch. I can do so many different things, man. It's, it's, it's crazy. So when can we look for that? Or, like, are you, is it still, like, really in the developmental it, phase No, it's, right it's in the development stages. I'm getting the characters drawn out right now. Okay. I'll, if you follow me on you follow me on social media, I, I put out two of the main characters, Mila and Luther. The dad is Luther and Mila is the, like one of the main girls. You're, you're gonna love it. Trust me. All right, I'm excited for that. I love me. I I always tell people they probably think I'm crazy, but I always say I look at life as a cartoon when I meet people, and yeah. that's why I feel like I'm very animated because you are. People <laughs> take life way too seriously. Got a smile, it's man, like, bro. You gotta fluctuate your voice. Sometimes it just changes people's moods and yeah you know I need a lot of that, man. That's and that's another big thing I will cover. The people around you have to make sense. You don't necessarily have to get money from them or anything like that, but it's about the energy. Like mm -hmm. I'm really big on positive energy. Like that's a that makes a big difference. Uh, uh, my 2016 saying is, you got to find your tribe, because we we're not in a world. I, I'm a DJ, so I, I focus a lot on music. And with the music industry, I see like you aren't gonna we aren't we don't have the you know Backstreet Boys, the Christina Aguilera's, the Tony Braxtons, where you're this huge role modeling like the Beyonce's the Rihanna's that's kind of to me the end of it now we're in this independent music phase yeah where you gotta get out there and fight and it's not about having all the fans it's about finding your core yeah, base yeah fans that's gonna we stick with you like Kevin Gates like yep. he's he's not mess, um, I wouldn't say he's well, yeah, like he's a, a big mainstream but he has his audience what people like like Hobson is another one. Yeah, Hobson. Um, and I feel like the the movie industry is starting to get that idea, and they're looking at it. They're like, "Oh wait, you know what? Music's really diverse right now. They're figuring out. Musicians are figuring out how to be their own entity." Yeah. And I feel like a lot of these networks, a lot of uh, these shows, they're cutting back and really trying to figure, they're trying to get into a hustler's uh, brain Brand, and figure yeah. out, like, how can we do this with this budget? And Because honestly, man, you don't even need a ton of, people don't understand this. They think, they sit back on so many ideas, they think they don't have the funds to do it. You got some people out there like me. If I like the idea, I will get on board and I may even put my own money behind it. It just depends. If I believe in it, then I'll do that. Boom. Like, I'm one of those guys. But you have to be out there and you have to really sell it, though. Like, if I have a meeting with you and you really, really, really into this, I'm like, okay. We get the paperwork together. You know what? I'm going to do this for you and we're going to make this work together. Like, if I'm really, really into it, I'm one of those guys. I'm, I like the ideas. I'm about creating. I think the money, that stuff is going to come. Mm. Once you chase the money, you can't chase it. You got to chase the dream, man. A lot of people want to get famous. They want all this stuff so quick. But you got to research and see all these people's stories of what they've been through. Like, it's so many. And all people that I feel like that kind of knows that without having the research is people that have been around me through my whole phase. Because I've been through so many different phases in life. That the people that I've met on my journey, like, man, this guy. If you can do it, I really, 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 really know I can do what I need to do. Like, I have a friend that plays football. He, like, you motivate me. You inspire me. So people telling me that and contacting me on Snapchat and all over the place, been following me. They like, dude, like, you just moved to LA. You didn't know anybody. You wasn't scared, no. Mm. Cause I know me and I know how the way that I work. I know how I grind. It's, I feel like I'm the hardest working person ever. That's how I feel. 
And, and that's in, in LA. You got to be that because New York too. Because if you ain't, they gonna eat you yeah. and chew you right on up. Um, okay, so you have this great head on your shoulders. You have this balanced head on your shoulders. Uh, where did that come from? Do you have mentors? Are there people in Man. the industry who are, you know, or maybe out of the industry that are just feeding you morals and feeding you guidance and keeping you humble in that aspect? Well, I have a, a mentor back home, Eddie Machete. He's the photographer for like all the sports team, the Rockets. He was also one of my high school coaches, and he's been with me through everything. So he's one of my biggest mentors. Sent me money whenever I needed it when I was slept in my cars. Like there's people, there's been people along the way that's been helping me. But my mentors within the business, I would say, would be Harry Lennox. He's really, really, really dope. He was in the new Batman movie mm. for Superman. He was extra dope. Uh, Oba Baba Tunde. He's just really good. Um, who else? It's a lot of people. What uh, are some Don of the, Lewis. the things that they've said to you that you've really kind of soaked in and have helped you with your career? Well, a lot of times for me, it's not what you say to me. It's about me paying attention to the moves that you make. It's like I can learn a lot from just looking. Because a lot yeah. of times people are so busy, you get a conversation with them, but I feel like I watch more. Like People give you game, but you have to pay attention. Like P. Diddy and DJ Khaled, these people give you game. They're not telling you, they're not going to give you the money, but they the stuff that they do, they showing you how to do it. You they'll just drop have to. The key. Yeah, they dropping <laughs> keys. Yeah, so me, I'm the one that's going to catch it. I'm, I'm like, okay. Those people, even watching DJ Khaled every day on Snapchat, that dude is like, yeah. I, I see, I can be myself and be super positive and, and, and it work out for me. Like, some people think they have to change who they are to be in this business. You don't. People, I've learned that people love it when you're yourself because so many fake people, so they know real genuine people. Mm. That's been the biggest thing for me. Me being genuine and actually loving people and, 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 and really caring about people. And, the one that, and I get the big picture is helping others. That's the biggest thing. My opportunities are going to come. That's what I'm saying. So that's the biggest thing. That's so true because I feel like coming out to LA. Uh, I mean, like you, I, I grew up on a small little town. You know, uh, never thinking. I mean, for me, I didn't think I was gonna come out to LA, and then I come out here, and you know, when you grow up in a small town, I don't, for me, <laughs> you trust people, and you know, you yeah, take people face value yeah. and it's so crazy in LA the the personalities especially with reality TV now that we have that, you know these people it's you see people who have had like actual good careers and then when they get on reality TV people like the negativity stuff right now and it's like so they feed up that character and it's almost like I've seen some reality stars who were actually actors or actresses and it's like you ain't never gonna go back into that yeah. world again it, man that's one thing I've been offered I won't say from who but a few times about going on reality shows I'm never doing that yeah I work too 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 hard to not be taken seriously like, well not and not only that but like you you're someone who you can control a project. Yes. What, like, I mean, I'm not putting myself in with someone else going to be able to chop me up and yeah. edit me and I'm not going to be in there like, we're not using that, that, that. Because what happens is people doing it, man, because it's quick. I yeah. won't say the money situation because I don't know their situation, but I say it's quick. People, oh, oh, you can get famous, but you don't realize, like, after you start doing club appearances, after you stop doing that, what are you going to do next? For what? Yeah, exactly. yeah for, So What's you really going to set yourself short on that when you can just be patient and keep working on what you're working on. Mm. And motivate people. Yeah. Uh, so for you, why is that so important to make sure that you are giving back? Why is that so strong? Because I feel like I was always that person sitting in the back of the room when somebody came to speak. I would probably wouldn't say anything to my friends because they probably think I was crazy. But I would always sit in the back and I would be the one listening. Like, that's going to be me. Somebody came to my college, small HBCU college in Texas, Jarvis Christian College, and they spoke. Jeff Johnson, this is his name. He spoke, headed the panel, who's giving this story. And I'm sitting all of them in the back of the auditorium, like, he was like, somebody can, you be the first person for Jarvis to put Jarvis on the map. If you don't like such and such, you be the one changing. I'm in the back, like, yeah, this guy's me. A few months later, I phew, went to Atlanta. I went to Atlanta somewhere. first, yeah, and I just started chasing my dreams, and I haven't looked back since. Why? What was uh, in Atlanta that made you? Well, I went to Atlanta because want to start there. Oh, well, I went to Atlanta because I was uh, trying to write music at the time, and I wanted to model. I thought I was going to be like um, the next Tyson Beckford for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that, but I went there. I mean, the way you work, and why not? <laughs> well, I went there, and I when I went there, I was like I was playing basketball, so I was going to transfer to Clark Atlanta. You know, they really liked me. And I got that. I look around like this is not it. I really don't want to do this anymore. Like, and I've never quit anything in my life. So that was really hard for me. But when I did it, I went to this modeling meeting. And I walked in, and this guy asked me, he said, this actor, he said, you ever thought about acting? You look like an actor. I said, no, but how, if, what what you what they paying if they paying me? Whatever. I said, well, uh, what, what, he gave me some numbers. I was like, well, yeah, I tried. So I got in like that, but then that's before I like really did my research. But after he gave me something to read and go over, and I killed it. I was like, damn, I might be on to something right <laughs> here. So that whole move of going to Atlanta just really what started me. 
and the first big thing I got when I first started by any lessons was uh, being Mary Jane. I got they was like the director wants you to do such and such. If you it's gonna be out of you and this other guy, and I was like cool. I didn't get it, but it was the fact that well, I just submitted and they just that quick. I'm like wow, like being Mary Jane was really good. It's like yeah. season one. <laughs> I didn't get that, but it was like showed me that this is this is for you. Like now you just got it's all about learning the craft and taking it to the next level. So I stayed up researching everything I could. And Atlanta went good. I worked with Tyler Perry and some other people, like on a pilot. I said, "Nah, I'm not waiting. I'm going to L.A." Come See, I asked your horoscope because I was like, "Are you a Virgo?" Because I'm a Virgo, and I you don't hear a lot of people being like, "Okay, you know, research the greats." You don't hear a lot of people, you know, "Oh, you know, what? I'm not going to put this out because I would rather research it first. Well, yeah. I feel like in in 2016, we get a lot of people just want to put the product out. Because it's like, oh, we just got to put something out. We just got to yeah. throw something out there. Why is it important for you to kind of make sure everything is branded together before it, it, it gets put out there? Because, you know, that's like you said, it's your brand. Like, so anything you put out and they see the Pioneers Collective, it's like, I want them to know quality. I want them to see certain things. Like, oh, I know who did that. Oh, I, I recognize this. They company put out quality work. So people may, for me, they may feel like, oh, he putting a cartoon on autographs ain't came out yet. Like, no, for me, I'm work, I'm always working on something. Whether it's my stuff or producing for somebody else, like I'm always working. So I feel like my time and everything, I think before I do everything. So I know I don't make a, a bad decision mm -hmm. for us like that. So far, I haven't. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, Music-wise, why did you step away from that? I felt like I didn't research enough. I feel like even that I jumped in. That was before I really knew anything about the craft. I just knew I like R&B and I knew I could sing. So I was like, let me write my own music. But the music was more old school type. So I like I need to find some adjustment. So I had to learn how to do song placement. Like, you know, that's a big thing. Like now you don't have to really know how to sing super good as long as you have good song placement. So I didn't know that. I didn't do enough research on mm -hmm. within the music. So I ended up getting into acting and it just went perfectly. But I haven't gave up on it yet because I still can do soundtracks for movies I produce and put my own song on it. So, uh, let's see yeah, see, I'm okay. always, I'm, I'm always You're like the hit. Chris Jenner over here. <laughs> <laughs> How can we make money off this situation? <laughs> Wait, so can you give us a little? Something? No, no, I think it's right okay. Now. You know, what I mean, I mean, I don't know. Put you yeah, on the spot. put that away a little while ago. Um, all right. So wait, you said you just said you had gone back to host an event at your college. Yeah. What kind of feeling was that? What was? How did you prepare for that? Like, what was that going was on in your mind? That was the most incredible feeling ever. Like more than any other role I booked. I think that was so incredible because people, some of these students that were there when I was there physically on campus. Because I'm a senior this year, so I'm graduate this year. So some of the people that were there through that kind of seeing some of my journey was still there. They was able to tell the other kids like, wow. And the best part about that is I put together this whole video. Of how, I said, like, how can I motivate this whole campus? Like, what can I do? So we have chapel. I had the whole schools in there. I put together a video with all my celebrity friends. They um like a listers like David Arquette and stuff like that. The videos for the college. I'm like, I want to show them like, no matter where you come from, no matter how small or big the college is, it's all about you and how you know portray yourself out there in the world like you can make it you can make it like right. being genuine and like i wanted to show them that i was still thinking about my school like i didn't leave and forget about anybody you know i i remember you no know, not having i remember my apartment burning down in college you know i had to go get a room having them help me do giving me food or raise money like i remember stuff like that so i always want to give back and then now i'm going to do an internship with my company for the school for the college every year i'm gonna have somebody like one person a year do uh to do that to come back and work on my company and get to meet all these people that I work with. So mm -hmm. I'm just always trying to find ways to do that. You don't have to be rich to give back. That's what people don't understand. Um, you know, uh, in Black Hollywood, you know, we're gonna have you on our, our show this week. Okay. Um, but we always talk about diversity in the media, and I always, you know, it always my biggest question was I feel like in the 90s we had so many you know I love the 90s black shows and th but the, the shows were about family oh yes and then it disappeared in like the 2000s you know we had our girlfriends and whatnot here and there and then it just kind of died down altogether until like the scandal came back and yeah. get, well came out and how to get away with murder um What's your take on Hollywood right now as far as diversity, as far as, you know, um, people saying there aren't opportunities in Hollywood for people of color? You know, I, I look at you and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, the thing is, people sometimes I won't say that it's not a problem completely because we all know it's a problem. But it, I feel like my experiences, I only speak from my experiences that I've had a, I haven't had an issue for as. If I don't book a role, I don't book it. Like, I don't think that much that deep into it. I just feel like somebody else better got the job. This is all about, 
how you look at things like i feel like i don't want to put my energy into that like i can't control that like all i can do is control what i can control mm -hmm. so like i said instead of waiting on people i have the ability to create that's another thing that i'll never feel like i'm out of work because i'm always working on something i'm always creating things like i go find opportunities it's always always something you can do you just got to work we might have to work harder than the next person what because of our color whatever it is but you have to do what you have to do this is the business you want to be in no don't complain don't do any of that unless you're gonna make a difference if you complain but other than that i feel like the state of hollywood right now is definitely changing it's, it's, ch it's gonna change because now with the media put every like the social media is like it's more in the forefront like now yep. you can't hide anything so it's, it's gonna change well in that but also i feel like people like you you know what i mean who remember where they came from and want to give back and you know sending that kind of a message i think honestly to me the cartoon is i'm, I'm most excited about because yeah. i feel like there isn't a good role model voice for children and so to hear what your cartoon is about and the fact that that is gonna be able to be accessible to to kids and i'm yeah i can guarantee that it's not gonna be some you know do 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 cartoon i feel like nah. it's gonna have swag and be cool it's, yeah it's gonna definitely yeah i have a good yes yeah, everything you think it is gonna be in there like i said we're gonna have we're gonna have the jokes we're gonna have like the we're gonna cover the stereotypes we're gonna cover so much but put it in like in a, in a funny way like we're gonna cover everything that's one of the main characters is, is biracial it's mixed with uh chinese and white like it's gonna be like showing they can be friends they might be neighbors like you never know where i'm gonna go with this but it's gonna have a uh, it's gonna be really good trust me it's gonna be very 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 entertaining i'm excited because i again like i said i just feel like we don't have those role models out here um so okay coming from texas to la though yeah take this texas texas <laughs> what is your how did you kind of balance yourself as far as like going from because uh, texas is just such a different I mean, really, any place outside of LA is yeah, different, <laughs> totally different. Uh, when you get into those moments of of doubt and whatnot, and not going back to the place of Texas, or is it that you do go back to Texas and that kind of re-energizes you? And for me, it's weird because when, when you leave LA, it's like you gotta when you come back, you could be gone for a week or a few days. You gotta readjust. It's like as soon as you get off the plane, it's like, oh man, I gotta. Oh, man. So for me going back to Texas sometimes I have a son there So that re-energizes me in that sense But after I'm there for like a week or two I'm, I'm around like I gotta get back Like I feel yeah. like you feel like I'm going a whole year I gotta get back I need to get back to doing what I was doing To finish what I started So this is, I have my mixed feelings about it Who um, is inspiring you right now? Like, what, mm. are, you, are you are you any music that you know Helps you creativity? Like how, when you're sitting at home And you're like alright I'm in my creative zone. Like, what is it you do? Is there like a Netflix show that you be putting on that just no. energizes your soul? Song something that energizes my soul for one that I pray that uh, that uh, energize me. And then uh, I look at Khaled, P D. I look at some of the moguls and I'm like, what made them different? Because we all special. What are they doing different? And which they do the same thing that I do. I realize that. I try to figure figure out the different things. Like, what can I do different? Like, I sit down and actually research and say, Nah, I've seen this, but I can do this. But how can I do that? how can i make this stand out so i i'll energize by that my son is my son praying and then looking at people like Khaled, Didi, and still people like that like terrence j like people like that because he I mean, him kind of have like the same background almost so just looking at people man i sit back and just read some of their posts it make it could be anything they'd be like i need to get on it mm. i'm going 110 i need to go 150 right now uh is there a, ro a specific type of role acting wise that you would like to play that's a good question because I said I wanted to because I played basketball in college so I was like I always wanted to play like this legendary basketball character that'd be more flow for my friends because everybody likes Jesus Shadow's word like even people like like Quincy McCall like and then I ended up writing it for autographs so I was like I just write my own character and <laughs> I just write my own story so I was like yeah and then the way this show covers is like it's told from a different perspective it's not and this dude's based on height it's based on not just basketball but internal stuff mm. so now I'm able to tell a founder to take a way to make a creative a legendary basketball character and tell it in a different way so I, instead of waiting on it, I kind of created it because I was like, yeah. Do you feel like, uh, you know, you keep talking about in the, you know, it, the show really focuses on the internal. Do you feel like that's something that we're missing uh, in entertainment? Yeah. And I feel like we we are. We missing that because people always, like I said, they want to tell you the title. They don't tell you all the hard work. They make you believe that you can. I mean, it's a good thing that make you believe you can do what you want. But they, I feel like they should tell you more of the steps of some of the stuff that they went through. So when people going through, they don't feel like, well, he didn't go through this. Yep. <laughs> 
oh this didn't happen why this happened to me so let me quick this is this is not right this is not lining up from what i read i feel like we have to do that because i feel like it's enough money out here for everybody i feel like we can all make it like we just have to it's about how you portray yourself you know and some of the roles you take how you respect yourself it's a lot of little th it's the little things honestly in my opinion that just sets people apart what is uh something well, i'll give you an example and then you play off of it so for me i um was living in new york Mm -hmm. And I fell through like a little depression. So I went back home and I uh, helped my mom build an accounting firm. So, which I'm like horrible at math, but I was actually really good at doing this. <laughs> That's so, dope, yeah. So I was stuck there. So for you, now, then obviously I come move out here and I'm like, ooh, good thing I ain't accounting no more. <laughs> but I look at what doing that for three years has helped me today. And how all these little steps coming up to to where I am, all are a part of you know the bigger. It's like a it power is. range. You know what I mean? They plug it together, and there you are. But what was your like moment of like, why did I? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And then when you look back at it, you're like, this makes sense. My moment was I, I remember this vividly. Like my moment was I was living in LA for about four months. Something happened with the place I was living. They was, the guy was stealing the money and didn't pay the owner or whatever was going on. So I ended up living in my, I ended up having to be homeless and went in my car. And I was sitting in my car for like two days. I'm like, okay, I don't know anybody here like that. I'm like, why am I, I start asking myself, why are you doing this? Like, what is your, because if you're doing this for your for yourself or if you're doing it for the bigger picture, because if you're doing it for yourself, you can go back home. And for me, I always keep in my mind, I don't have anything to go back to. That's how I always view everything. So I'm like, that was the moment for me. I, I sat back and like, okay, yeah, this is for about the bigger picture. So you're gonna go through whatever you need to go through, because like I said, I've been homeless like probably three times in my life. So like, all everything has built up to this. So I, I feel like I was built up to make it in Hollywood. Honestly, that's why nothing really bothers me. Mm -hmm. If it don't work out a certain way, I always find a way to get around it or, or make it happen. So that was the biggest moment for me. Within uh, experiencing that being homeless, uh, what push what well being in that moment what would you say to to people out there that are in that situation that because i mean i've heard that that's an la story yeah you know i mean a lot of people come out here and you know they come out here with a certain amount of money and they think that's gonna work and when you find out how expensive <laughs> la is yeah i came out only with my rent money you know what i'm saying i say because i know my i know me though i always i feel like no matter where i go in this world i know me and I know I get the job done no matter what it is. If I got to, I'm able to adjust. That's the thing. Like I say, everything in my past have built me up. I'm able to adjust. Taking showers at Planet Fitness, getting that $10 membership. So I'm like, I get this. I can shower every day for a whole month until mm -hmm. I figure whatever else I need to figure out. Clothes in the back, sleeping in the car. Just got to be able to adjust. If you really want to do this, you're going to go through whatever you need to go through to get to where you're trying to go. Yo, this guy right here, <laughs> I just can't. Um, all right, so we got to wrap up. But um, for, for autographs, we want to help out. We want to support. Um, again, tell everyone where they can go. Uh, to d help donate money to raise money for this you can go to auto um go fund me backslash autographs the series and then you can go to my the facebook page because all the social media is up so um autographs the series uh, instagram you can go to trey williams t-r-a-y underscore underscore williams and uh, check the link out there and that's pretty much it right there mm. um and then as far as like okay so we got the cartoon we got autographs the series uh what else is in this brain of yours and what else in 2016 are you trying to accomplish before the end of the year i want to do more motivational speaking like i want to go to the gym and talk to the teenagers that's something that anybody out there that listens to that that's something special that i want to do because i can relate to them on that level as well mm. i'm gonna make that happen for you Okay. I'm going to hook you up with something. Well, we want to thank y'all for tuning in. Please, please, please check out Autograph the Series. Help support. Let's get this out there. It's dropping this summer. Boom. Uh, wait, do we have a month? Yeah. Uh, what month? Oh, uh, no, June. All right. End of June. It will be coming out. Boom. End of June, y'all. Um, make sure you guys hit us up at BHL Online on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You guys can keep in contact with me at DJ Jesse J. Until next time, peace. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at BlackHollywoodLive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me. 
at King XO Bay. Thanks for tuning in. And pay for Hollywood me. Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the whole song and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.